All right, good afternoon. We've now been joined by Martin Truex Jr., driver of the number 78 Auto Owners Insurance Toyota. And we will now take questions for Martin. If you have one, please raise your hand and state your name and affiliation. And we'll start with Jacob. Jacob Seelman, Speed Sport. Uh, I'll start with the obvious. How wild was that, Martin? Over here. Where you at? Oh, <laughs> Over here. Oh, there you are. <laughs> uh, it, yeah, it wasn't that bad, actually. Um, uh, we only made three laps. Uh, cars in one piece. We knocked zero fenders off. <laughs> we destroyed zero splitters. <laughs> and uh, it was pretty uneventful. And so, uh, yeah, that was good. But, uh, yeah, there's definitely a lot, of, a lot of chance for it to get crazy. You know, the hard part is there's just uh, you're on a road course. Um, you know, we're on a hard tire. And you want to push. You know, typically road courses, you're always pushing for that last inch or two or, you know, a foot in the braking zones. And now you know if you get that extra foot and it's too much, you're going to be off the track somewhere. So um, kind of trying to weigh the risk versus reward as the laps go by. And uh, so far, so good for us. Not, not, not so great for some others. How much risk are you going to have to take in qualifying this afternoon knowing that track position is going to be so crucial? We'll, de we'll definitely step it up for sure. Um, you know, in practice, I was hoping to make a, a second run. We only ran on one set of tires our first two runs, and we got out there with a minute to go and ran out of time. So I was a little disappointed that I couldn't get out there and, and try to, you know, push a little harder and find some more time. Um, but, yeah, I mean, qualifying, you know, I think that it's going to get a lot faster, you know, just because the guys are going to take more – Take more of each curb and each corner and, and um, push the limits. So we'll see uh, how we can do with that. All right, Bob. Bob Pockers, ESPN. Do you expect to knock a fender off or hit something at some point on Sunday? No. I expect not to. My team expects me not to. I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's doable, you know. I think uh, I feel okay about the track. You know, like I said, it's uh, it's de different than when we tested because of the tires, and and also, you know, a lot of the a lot of the mental cues are different. You know, because they painted everything, and the walls are in different spots, and so it everything just looks different. So just trying to find those, you know, those markers um, in my head. I, I obviously I only made three laps, so I I'm far from getting it figured out, but um, I feel like you know we can uh, we can go out there and race and have a good time and uh, see what we come up with all right kenny microphone to kenny please kenny bruce with kennybruce.net martin what are your feelings about uncontrolled tire penalties i i completely agree with cole's tweet from last week how's that <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if they stay in the box, you know, what's the big deal? Um, you know, I think our fans want to see, you know, hard racing. They want to see the guys that are, you know, up front battling, not going to the rear you know, once every two or three weeks for uh, for a tire sitting there with a guy that's a foot too far away from it. So I, I don't agree with it. I think we should look at it, but, you know, I don't make the rules. All right, Matt. Matt Weaver, Auto Week. Uh, two kind of off-the-wall questions for you. I think you'll appreciate at least one of these. Uh, this is the 50th anniversary of Hot Wheels. Do you have any memories of Hot Wheels growing up? Did you have a favorite car, anything like that? I had a lot of them. I don't know if I had a favorite, but, you know, as a kid that loved racing, I had all all kinds of, you know, Hot Wheels cars and things like that, so for sure. The other one is uh, this is the 25th anniversary of the NASCAR racing Papyrus PC game. And I was talking to Ryan uh, a couple of weeks ago about this, and he said at one point he logged on as you and you know, dumped <laughs> crashed a bunch the whole field. Yeah, and you got on and was like, <laughs> "What the heck?" Yeah, the of that and, and doing that with your brother. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, uh, I remember the first time that came out. It was so revolutionary, you know, for uh, for for us guys that like to race. And um, I was already, I believe, racing go karts at the time, you know. So for me. Um, you know, wanting to be a driver and all that. I mean, it was like super realistic. It was really cool to be able to play that game. So, uh, spent a lot of time on there for sure. But yeah, uh, it was a few, a few years later 
actually that uh, that my brother did that because he was quite a bit younger than me. So took a, took a while actually before I even knew he did it, and uh, it wasn't very nice of him. I don't get that mad. Yeah, <laughs> he was young and dumb. I gave you know I just was like yeah whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry Jordan, kicking the tires. Net Performance Racing Network. During the test, you had limited comments about the track. You've opened up more about the Roval now. Is that by choice that you had? You you have to accept it now, or have you come to embrace the the Roval as it, as it will be in the race? Um, I'd say it's probably half and half. You know, um, knowing that we have to race here, positive mental attitude certainly helps as a driver to be successful. I think. Um, you know, having the right approach. Um, but also, you know, the track has changed a lot since the first time we came here. The tires have gotten better consistently, you know, as we've went, went through that process. And, um, you know, honestly, when we first, the first day we came here, I was one of the guys that did the very first test track was completely different than it is now. And there was just, there was no curves. There was no walls there. It was like you were driving through a parking lot trying to figure out lines through cones, you know, so it was really difficult to get a feel for things. Um, so since, I mean, there's been so many upgrades and improvements and a lot of work done in the infield, especially, and you almost feel like you're at a totally different track now. So I think part of it is that as well. Um, you know, Marcus and, and everyone here has really put a lot of effort into this and, um, and here we are to race. So, um, try to make the best of it and hopefully have a good weekend. All right, Nate. Hey, Ryan, NBC, uh, NBC Sports. Martin, when you talk about the, the risk versus reward and getting that extra foot, it seemed like the um, the exit of the backstretch chicane is where a lot of guys got in trouble. Is that the area of the track maybe where you have to measure that the most? Surely there's a lot of risk there with that tire wall being there. You know, and, and again, the track is different. So when we tested here, there was no tire wall there. And we were a whole car width to the left coming out of that chicane compared to where we are today. So... You know, it's just trying to figure out those new, the new walls and things and where they're at. And it, it you know, obviously it affects how you can drive the car. Um, and, and so, yeah, I mean, that's definitely one of the tricky spots because it's so fast. And a little slip there, you know, because your, your plan is to come out of that chicane and be as close to that tire wall as you can be because that's where the speed is. So if you get in the middle of that chicane and all of a sudden the back of the car steps out a little bit, which we've seen a couple of guys do today, and you got to catch it you know, you find your left front tire in that tire wall. So just not a lot of room for air. And, um, you know, you got to kind of creep up on it. I don't like the back chicane. That's not my favorite part of the track. I'll say that. My favorite part, um, I like the infield because it feels like road course. You know, it's like they're actual turns. It's not part of a you know an oval track or anything the infield's pretty cool it's just slick all right dustin dustin long nbc sports uh martin i want to ask you just is how although you only have the three laps how physically tough is this track on these cars and also what tell me about the I guess the challenge of, of start the start or restart because I understand you guys will be essentially going into turn one and third gear downshift to second um, and then you will still have the pack accelerating behind you what kind of chaos could be there um, as far as the the first question with the um, you know how how hard is the track on the cars um, it's really just those blue curbs um, you know we've seen a few guys um, really hit them hard there in, uh, in the first practice and, and tear up some stuff. So you kind of got to stay off of those. You can use the blue one a little bit there on the front stretch um, chicane. But it's those curves that are really, really, really tough on the car because they're so tall. So they really, you know, it's a lot of force um, on the tires that you hit them with. Aside from that, I'd say it's, it's really not bad at all. Um, it, the blue things are pretty, pretty tough. Um, restarts. Really, I mean, I think that's probably where most of the questions lie is, is restarts and traffic. How do we navigate the place? Um, you know, how, how can we go too wide? Where can we go too wide? Um, you know, how's, how's that all going to play out? So that'll be the interesting part. Um, and, and 
turn one specifically, you know, turn one and two, the walls on both sides, really narrow, um, kind of a, a difficult spot on the racetrack. So we'll just, you know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't really know how to answer your question there. I think everybody is, you know, anxiously, uh, I guess, anticipating what will happen there, and hopefully we can uh, figure out a way to make it through there. All right, Tyler. <clears throat> Uh, this, hi, Martin. Hey. Tyler Burnett, Motor Racing Network. Uh, Dover and Kansas are two of your best racetracks in the next round. Um, what do you make of the next round and some of the challenges you will face next week at Dover, one of your favorite tracks? Yeah, definitely uh, definitely looking forward to it. You know, a couple good tracks for us in Talladega. So we'll see. Uh, yeah, we'll just see. Uh, hopefully, you know, we can do what we did the first round and have two really good first races and um, you not have to worry about it. Um, I feel like Dover and Kansas are both places we can go and win at. Um, you know, our team's been doing a really good job of, of being prepared and showing up to the track uh, ready. You know, I feel like the first two races of the playoffs, we, we were in position to win. And, um, you know, we're doing all the right things. So we'll just uh, we'll keep doing what we're doing and um, hopefully, you know, win a race in the next round. All right, go ahead. Steve Sprites of the Alaska Press. Martin, um, in your opinion, where is going to be the best place to pass on the track? And where would you have to be absolutely crazy to try and make a pass? Uh, um, so my thought, my first thought is that um, coming out of turn eight, uh, where you come out onto turn one of the oval track, I think, you know, that corner is, is pretty tough. It's slick. And it's really, really important to get off that corner well because you're, you know, you go so far uh, running wide open. I feel like that'll probably be the number one passing zone. If you can get under a guy coming out of there, they're going to have to let you go when you get to the chicane on the back stretch. There's no possible way. I don't think we can go through there too wide. Um, so I would say that coming out of eight is probably the first thing, that, the first spot that comes to mind. Um, and possibly coming out of 17 onto the front stretch, start finish line into turn one looks like a pretty decent spot as well, because it's really hard to get the power down uh, out of 17 on the front straight. You know, guys, especially on old tires, I feel like guys will be able to make moves there. Uh, nowhere is impossible. <laughs> All right, we're going to come up front to Lewis and Brendan, and then we'll take our last question from Channel 9. Go ahead. Lewis Frank of Reuters. Earlier today, a couple of the drivers said they've to speed up communications back to their crew. They've got nicknames for turns. Do you have any nicknames yet? Uh, I, I'm still trying to figure out the numbers, so <laughs> nicknames may come later. <laughs> I think the track name, some of them, I don't see it on their map here. I'm looking at it, but I know that the turn one was heartburn turn. I don't know what the rest of them are called, but yeah. Go ahead, Brendan. Hey, Martin. Brendan Marks, the Charlotte Observer. You mentioned how much this has changed since testing and, and how they've added walls and a bunch of different other things. What, I guess, what would you say, what is the single biggest difference on the track since testing that, that they've made and why has that been such a challenging adjustment? Um, the, the chicane on the back stretch is the biggest deal. I mean, it's the fastest part of the track. It's the narrow, it's for the speed and how narrow it is, that's the big one. Um, you know, it's been configured differently every time I've been on it. And of course here this weekend, it's, it's a lot different. So um, just in my mind, that's the easiest place to screw up because you're trying to, you know, there's so much speed to be gained going through there, but yet we've seen what can happen if you miss it by a few inches, as those guys did today. So very risky. Hey, hey, Martin, Phil Orban from WSOC in Charlotte, right, right in front of you. Um, how does the fact that you're already locked into the next round affect your opinion of this racetrack, and can you sympathize with the guys that are on the bubble with all the unknown? Um, yeah, I mean, it doesn't. It really doesn't change my opinion of the track itself. Um, it changes my outlook for the weekend, I would say, quite a bit. Um, yeah, I wasn't nervous this week. Um, I'm pretty carefree, f you know, feeling like it's uh, a race that, you know, we'd like to come in here and win. So, um, you know, really no, nothing to really worry about. Obviously, we want to do well. We want to get some bonus points if we can. That's the name of the game right now. So, um, yeah, I mean, it'll be fun. It's definitely more fun than, than coming here. You know, some of those guys, like, I can't imagine what they're thinking right now and how nervous they are about it. But. Um, you know, once we all get out there, it's a race and you got to figure it out. So, um, you know, from that standpoint, looking forward to the challenge. All right, Martin, before we let you uh, go, have you given Sherry any tips on 
uh, driving the pace car yet? Uh, I just basically told her to just stay on the track. I heard <laughs> – it <laughs> sounds easy, right? Um, I don't know. I heard a, a pace car spun out recently. Is that true? Possibly, this yeah. morning? So it is possible. So I just told her to stay on the track, stay off the curves, and stay off the brakes. We'll see how it goes. It's going to be really fun to see her do it. To see her do that, and uh, hopefully we'll get the pole so I can start, you know, on the pace laps, I can give her a little little tap, maybe a little bump, <laughs> a little fender rub or something. That would be really cool. All right. Well, we wish you the best of luck this weekend. We thank, thank you, you for spending some time with us. Thank you.